I'm in the cutting garden now and it's uh, mid to late August and it's a very late year but it's been incredibly sunny and so the plants have just loved it. It's dry, our soil is very heavy here, very heavy clay and you'll see places where there are great crevasses in it where it's literally just cracked because it's so dry. But um, what's good is it, things like sweet peas because we've watered them and fed them they've kept going, normally they'd, they'd be over by now. And we've got these new metal frames and I just love walking down here and the whole idea of this is that you've got the highly scented sweet peas which are at the bottom story and then Cabea scandens, the cup and saucer plant, is a rampant climber which goes right up and over the top. And it's just starting now but that flowers honestly until December if we don't have a very hard frost. So these will have come out by then, obviously the sweet peas will take, will just um, unthread them and put them on the compost heap. But the great thing is the cabea will come next. So you get this fantastic succession. If you have sweet peas first and cabea second, you're really covered with cut flowers and things for arches from June until December. And that's really the aim. And I love the poking through of the cleome, the spider flower, the American spider flower, and the combination of that with steeper gigantia, the golden oats grass. And, uh, and the Mexican sunflower, Tithonia rotundifolia. So you've got the Cleome purple king, the steeper, and the lovely Mexican sunflower. Look there, There's, the bumblebees absolutely love it. It is just so rich in nectar. And today, when it was hot, there were bumblebees just sort of asleep on the flowers because they were so well fed, they just dozed off. It was hilarious. We kept finding all these bumblebees just sort of fast asleep, which is a very nice sight. I'm kind of drunk on all the on all the sugar, really. Um, and so, so that that works incredibly. I'm very very pleased with it. Yeah. So I also wanted to show you Lilium speciosum rubrum, and this is a species lily, and it's not as highly scented as some, but it's incredibly long lasting. And I am not exaggerating when I say that I put these in pots ten years ago, and I feed them in the spring, but otherwise I haven't done anything to them. And they, they just thrive, they love it. And there's a white variety too. And the great thing is they flower in August. So they're unusual for lilies in that. And they're this beautiful Turk's cap shape, like a, like a sultan's um, turban really. And, and I, I absolutely love them. And you can still see there are buds coming and they just go on and on and on flowering for ages. So that's why I've put them at uh, the entrance way as you go into the tunnel. I, I just think they work really well, they're really pretty. And another plant that has done so well this year with all the sun is the staircase plant, Leonotus leonorus. And I'm going to stand by it because you'll see, even, I know it's on a raised bed, but if I stand by it, and I'm going to stand on the raised bed, I'm five foot nine. So, you know, what is it? It's eight foot. I mean, isn't that fantastic? And we use this for flower arranging. And we often, we can leave these on, or you can just take these off, the orange things, the little uh, salvia-like flowers, and you can use it as a brilliant foliage plant, wonderful upper story. Or you can even just chop it here, chop it here, and use it in a hand-tied bunch. And it's so versatile, and yet it gives you this incredible grand scale. And with the tithonia, works so well, the colouring. I, I really I love it, the texture and the colouring is, is just a perfect marriage. So what we've got here is a white garden combination and lots of these are actually on trial and we've got a beautiful white very highly scented annual dianthus called Dianthus superbus alba and then we've got a white adjuratum and, um, and the gara the bride which uh, I've, I've, I've loved for ages but the thing I'm really happy with this year is this annual euphorbia called Summer Ice um, Euphorbia Marginata. You can see why, because it's margined, it's variegated. I don't normally like variegated flowers very much, but I think that is just beautiful in here. And, and this, isn't, this hasn't reached its best yet. Um, it's going to be better in about a month, but I'm really, I'm really keen to keep an eye on this, because I think these are interesting combinations. It's worth having a look at this. This is our clematis setting. And you can see it's stretched horizontally about 18 inches off the ground. Uh, and we just put it into these um, hazel supports, but you can use bamboo canes. And it's taut. And so all these things come up through it. 
and then very quickly they completely obscure it and you just don't even know it's there but it supports them so you then don't need to stake things because one's, one's tempted to think with something that only grows to that high that you don't need to stake it but unfortunately what tends to happen is it sort of slides over onto its hip and so you get a kind of knee in it and then it grows up so you've lost six to eight inches at the bottom of the stem and if you've only got a plant that grows to two foot that is a shame so if you grow it from the word go straight through the netting you get the maximum stem length and also because the light is pulling all its chemical processes vertically you get a much stronger more robust and good stem for cutting basically so that's why clematis netting is a really good thing it might not look beautiful at the moment but I promise you Within a week or two, this it will become invisible on this bed.